Certainty is, is, I think, a false goal. I mean, we're not achieving, we're, we're achieving functional certainties in science and in just the, in our in our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, it's a functional certainty that I'm sitting here talking to you, though it's possible I could be dreaming or, you know, deceived by an evil demon. Um, I mean, those kinds of phil philosophical, epistemological worries don't really relate too much to the ordinary practice of science, the very useful practice of science, and our ordinary um, task of just negotiating our lives and finding happiness in this world. Uh, we recognize that there's a, a range, there's a continuum of, you know, I'm not sure, you know, it's a coin toss, 50-50 uh, uh, understanding of a circumstance to being functionally certain uh, about what is so. and. Many people are pretending to be functionally certain or believe themselves to be functionally certain about things like Jesus is going to come back and judge the world in their lifetime. I mean, 20% of the American population claims to be functionally certain that that is going to come to pass, and 78% think that Jesus is going to come back sometime, not necessarily in their lifetime. Uh, and these certainties do real work for us. I mean, the, the, the person who is certain that... Uh, the soul enters the zygote at the moment of conception, is the person who wants to veto stem cell research, uh, despite the fact that tens of millions of people are suffering conditions which, for which stem cell research is the best line of research to generate therapies. So these, these are ideas that are not just of academic interest or personal, private, spiritual relevance. I mean, these are, these are shaping policy. They're shaping a national conversation. And then when you look to the Muslim world, they are causing people to blow themselves up on street corners. I believe in the power of conversation to get human beings to converge on a common project in which, in which people can collaborate in an open-ended way in a non-divisive way, in a way that, that never requires a, an appeal to violence. And, and we have that in science. We have that in much of intellectual discourse. We, we very much don't have that in religion. I mean, it, it's just there's nothing that a fundamentalist Christian and a fundamentalist Muslim can say to one another to put their beliefs on the table for, for revision. I mean, they, this is what dogmatism is. It is, it is a willingness to believe things for bad reasons, and an unwillingness to have your rather tenuous reasons challenged. I mean, it's, you're, you're saying, I believe this no matter what you or anyone else says. So that's, that's the, it's the antithesis of conversation. It really is a, a, a conversation stopper. And so that's, um, uh, that's why I, I paint a very stark difference between faith and reason. I mean, reason, if, if you're reasonable, if you're interested in how the world works and what is true altogether, you are open, you're by definition open to, to, to further conversation, to more argument, to more evidence. And you're, you're in fact interested to find out if you're mistaken about anything. If you are not predisposed to that, that, that open-ended conversation, um, you really have, you have rendered yourself immune to influence from the world, influence apart from just having someone, you know, uh, pull out the guns on you. I mean, so there are certain people, because of their dogmatism, who have made themselves impossible to talk to. I mean, there's just nothing that you're going to say to get Osama bin Laden to reconsider his view of the world. Um, and it's a unique feature of religion that we defend this mode of being uh, in a religious context in a way that we would never tolerate it in another context. I mean, if, you're, if, if somebody has medical beliefs, you know, if, you're, if your doctor says... You know, I know this, this, this cures cancer, but, you know, I'm not going to tell you how or why or, or um, you know, I'm not going to have my data challenged. I mean, this is, that's a mode of talk within a medical context that, you know, you would never get through medical school appealing to those kinds of, of, of intuitions. Um, it, that really is the, the core of faith-based religion, this idea that, that there are certain things like that the Bible is the perfect word of God or that the Quran is the per perfect word of God that just have to be accepted, cannot be challenged. Uh, and in certain contexts, certainly within the Muslim world, you can die for calling those certainties into question. I mean, it literally is 
uh, a capital offense to wonder whether the Quran may not be the perfect word of the creator of the universe. I mean, it's just, and it used to be a killing offense within Christianity. It's just, it's just, we have moderated the Western religion, Judaism and Christianity, to a remarkable degree because of the last 200 years of, of scientific and political progress.